Yo, what is good YouTube? Montel Christopher Gordon here, aka The Last Pariah, back with another video for you guys. Thank you for all the love and support on my last video. You guys smashed the hell out of that like button and that subscribe button. We actually managed to gain 300 subscribers in the first day. That is love right there, you guys. If you haven't watched my first video, I suggest you go and check it out because that one is a banger. If you're new to this channel, I am a digital entrepreneur who's documenting his journey from absolutely zero to 100. I teach you all the stuff you need to know about e-commerce, social media marketing, and entrepreneurship in general. In today's video, we're going to be talking about why I decided to drop out of university in order to pursue my entrepreneur dreams and why I think going to university in 2018 is a scam and you shouldn't spend a single penny on it if you want to become an entrepreneur or a business owner. It's my time to finally clear the air on this one because it was a huge leap of faith for me. But first and foremost, I need to address a few pointers before going into this one. One, I am not a drop out, I'm a opt out. I didn't fail university, university failed me. Two, I've tried both business at university and starting a couple of businesses on my own. So I am in the position where I can talk about both from first hand experience. If you haven't been to university in the last decade or started an online business in your entire life, how can I take advice from you? Free. What you decide to do with your life is up to you and you only. It's got nothing to do with me or anyone else for that matter. Remember, it's you that has to sit in them classes and take those exams, not them. Four, I will only use real facts and figures I've collected firsthand. And five, I'm not trying to say university isn't important or that it doesn't slightly increase your chances of getting a job, but who said I wanted a job in the first place? That was never in my plans. Uni is definitely important if you want to become a lawyer, a doctor, or some sort of nuclear physicist or something like that. But if you're looking to become an entrepreneur or a business owner, you do not need to step a single foot inside of a university classroom. And I'll tell you why in this video. Before I lay down any facts or figures that I've been collecting, you first need to realize that it doesn't matter what the facts or figures say. If I wasn't enjoying university and it genuinely wasn't for me, then why the hell would I continue going? We are all going to die. Stop doing shit to please others around you. Live your own life. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into this one. Enjoy, yo. Okay, let me give you a quick rundown on my whole university experience just to bring you guys up to speed a little bit. I wanted to originally go to university to study graphic design so I could design my own clothes and make my own clothing line after I graduated, which I now have. In fact, I'm wearing an item right now. I'll put the link in the description for you guys so you can go check that out. But look at where my mind was set at. I only wanted to go to university so I could become my own businessman. That was always the goal. Not once did I mention anything about wanting to become someone else's worker. Anyway, that plan failed because I didn't have an art portfolio. I then switched my course to business and ICT because I thought that this course would teach me all I need to know in order to set up my business and run it online. After six months of attending, I wanted to drop out. I kid you not, instead of teaching me how to set up and start my business, they were teaching me how to work in one, which I was kind of confused by because nurses take nursing to become a nurse. Engineers take an engineering course to become an engineer. Businessmen take business courses to become a businessman, no? Am I wrong? So why am I learning about how to write CVs and get a job? Like, that's the opposite. I immediately got introduced to drinking and partying, which made me lose focus. That's just the environment university is. But anyway, after six months, I didn't drop out because I thought, hey, maybe this is just my first year. It'll probably get better in the second year. Besides, my parents will kill me, kill me. I'm from a family that has the working class mentality, which is you go to university, get the best grades that you can, and by some reason you're guaranteed to become successful. Then you can buy a big house, a fast car, and live happily ever after. Like uni is the place you need to be. And if you don't go, you're a flop or a quote unquote waste man. I've been called both of these numerous of times in fact. But 
that just isn't the case anymore in 2018. There are literally 17 year olds netting 50k profit a month from online businesses without degrees. While there are 30 year olds with a piece of paper making 40k a year still paying off their student loans. No offence, but I know what route I am taking. After one and a half years, my business still hadn't moved an inch. I had no guidance. I was just living it day by day, following other people's instructions. I then started attending less and less and less because it was all bullshit anyway. So I was thinking, what's the point? Because I lived with my parents throughout uni, they started to clock on that I wasn't actually attending. And then they started asking me questions on why I'm not going. I used to just shrug it off and say, oh, I'm just studying at home. After a couple more months, I managed to finally grow the balls and tell them that I don't want to go no more. That I wanted to start my own business and university genuinely wasn't for me. Which I thought they'll understand. I mean, they are my parents, right? But yo, Bruh. I was more than wrong. The cussing I got will never be forgotten. Like, they went ham. And it wasn't just one occasion too. We'd have arguments at least two, three times a month ever since then. To the point where I'd have to leave my own home for weeks on end and just not come back. They stopped helping me financially and I went broke in six months because all I was doing was partying. Because that was my little escape from my own reality. It was the only thing in my life I had to enjoy. That's how lost I was. I'm not gonna jump on camera and pretend that becoming an entrepreneur is easy or glamorous. You really have to live like others won't so you can live like others can't. When entrepreneurs say you're gonna have to eat shit for a few years, they really mean it. You're either in or you're out. Not to put anybody off wanting to become an entrepreneur, just know that if you're gonna do it, make sure you stick to it and make sure you're grinding every single day. Because trust me, there is no greater feeling than when everyone's telling you you can't do something, you can't do something, and then you just go and fucking do it and you prove every single little bitch wrong. When you have a burning desire, no one, not even your parents can get in your way. But can you blame me for going broke? 21 years and I finally become financially dependent. The first time you wrote your name on a piece of paper, did it look good? The first time you played football, was you good? No one has ever sat me down and taught me about money, how to generate it, and how to acquire true income generating assets. I've never been taught how to invest money or which companies I should be investing in. I've just been taught what companies are good to work in. You see the difference? I've not been taught how to get a mortgage, how taxes work, or how to leverage credit to my advantage. I've just been taught that all credit is bad and that I should stay away from credit cards altogether. In fact, I don't even have a credit card. You see the difference? I've never been sat down and taught how to generate passive income streams and how to stop working for money and making money work for me. I've just been taught, work as hard as I can and I'll get a promotion. You see the difference? To be honest, I am not complaining. Going broke was the best thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. They say that two things change a man. One, inspiration, and two, desperation. And because I went broke, I got desperate and it caused me to change. It made me step up and become proactive. I took control of my life. I said, enough is enough. I'm coming for everything those mother f told me I couldn't have. Like it just clicked in my head. I started researching online how to make money as an entrepreneur. I then stumbled across the world of e-commerce and I immediately fell in love, especially with dropshipping. I became completely obsessed. I started waking up at 5.30 in the morning just so I could watch more YouTube videos about dropshipping. I would wait up late so I could join webinars taught by masters halfway across the globe. I even sold off some of my old shoes just so I could buy books on Audible and learn more about entrepreneurship in general. I was learning everything I possibly could. It took me a while to find what I was truly passionate about, but from the minute I dropped out of university, I knew I was on the right path. I just had this heavy burden and weight on my shoulders just lifted. It was a sigh of relief. I can honestly and genuinely say now that the business you learn in university and the business I've had to learn first hand from experience are completely different 
they're not even in the same dimension. I have learned more in the last six months of studying on my own than I did in the whole two years plus I was at uni for. Which leads me to point number one. The knowledge they teach you and provide is generalized knowledge. It's not specialized knowledge, meaning it's not practical knowledge. That doesn't mean what they were teaching me was incorrect or bad knowledge. It just wasn't useful knowledge. With what they were teaching me in those classes, I couldn't immediately take, go home and implement right there and then in order to start my own business that very same day. They were teaching me all about business theories and frameworks, which is all well and good knowing about some dead guy called Max Bolsa and his ice-based knowledge management model, Porter's five forces and all these other theories. But how the hell am I going to take that information there and start this clothing line, sir. The stuff I needed to learn was, how do I register my business and what do I need in order to do so? Will I need a website? If so, how will I build one? What's the best platform to use? How will I drive traffic to my website and get sales? How do I even process a sale? Instead of teaching me stuff like the McKinsey 7S model, stuff that I'll never actually use, why don't you teach me actual useful stuff like how to create Facebook ads, which type of ad campaign should I be running first, a PPE ad or a WC ad? If it's a WC ad, shall I optimize it for ATCs or purchases? If university is so good, why don't they teach you stuff like which apps you should be using to create upsells and sales bundles to increase your AOV so you can make as much money per customer as you possibly can? Why don't they teach you methods on ways of decreasing your CPM? so you can reach more potential customers for less costs. Why don't they teach you about influencer marketing and how to leverage Instagram influencers to your advantage so you can get traffic for cheap? Why don't they sit down with you and look at your business's website and help you optimize it so you can increase your conversion rate? Why don't they teach you how to create retargeting ads and how to create lookalike audiences based on data you've collected from your Facebook pixel. Those are the things that really make you money. I mean, think about it. If they taught you how to get 500 visitors to your website a day with a 3% conversion rate, which is industry average, that means you'll be hitting 15 sales a day. 15 sales a day at $30 per t-shirt is $450 a day. Minus your product costs, which is $8 per t-shirt, that's $330 a day profit. That's $2,310 a week and 120K a year. That's real business. And the joke is, by the time you actually need to implement one of these models, you will probably be big enough to hire a graduate with a first class honors degree to come implement the business model for you and pay them 25K a year while you're netting 500k a year sat in the Bahamas with your Lambo. That's why the A students work for the B students and the C students own the businesses. Statistically speaking, the A students do get all the best jobs, but all the dropouts have all the best businesses. There is definitely something fishy going on, don't you think? It's like university gives you the information you think you should know, and they use the most complex way of explaining things using big flashy words that you don't quite understand. So you're sat there thinking, what the f does that mean? I better fix up and start listening. But in reality, you take it in, you grasp the concept, and then it does nothing for you. You're still in the same position you was the day before. The business hasn't moved an inch. How can a 50,000 pound business and ICT course not teach me how to set up my own business online or run a simple ad on the world's most powerful social media platform. Point number two, university is not good for your mindset. When I was sat in my classes, I didn't even feel like I fit in. I felt like a pariah. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I felt like everyone was only working hard in them classes just so they could go get a job. I don't think anyone in that class had hopes for more than 80K a year. And I definitely don't think anyone in that class really thought that doing 1 million in a year was even possible. It was like everyone's imaginations were limited. They were scared to dream big or something. They had been capped. They were already willing to settle with working for someone else all their lives at the age of 21, 22. When realistically, your 20s are the best time in your life to start a business when you don't have any financial responsibilities like kids 
or a wife or a big house. Some of them were doing the utmost to increase their chances of getting the 25K a year job over the 22K a year job. And I was just sat there thinking, we're worth more than 25K a year. 25K a year sounds like a struggle every month. I know you could say that they were just trying to get the best degrees that they could, but you have to remember this was a business course and nobody really had businesses, business ideas, hopes or aspirations. It was so backwards. I'll give you a perfect example. If a big company was to come in the classroom and say to everyone, we are offering only one candidate a 60K a year job, but you have to come and work for us for the rest of your lives. 99% of that class would have got up so quick they would have tripped up over each other and fought for the door for that one spot. Guess who the 1% was? But the important point in this message I'm trying to make is this. If a human that's raised by monkeys can almost become a monkey themselves, like literally behave like them, learn how to catch birds and climb trees just because they've been surrounded by monkeys all their lives. What happens when you're surrounded by average people and average minds all your life? What do you think happens to you then? Humans are creatures of habit. They say that if you have nine close friends who are smokers, you'll eventually become the tenth. With the type of mindset everyone's got at university, your business is just not going anywhere. If you cannot believe you are going to make a million, you're just never going to make a million. Learning shouldn't be a chore. We don't learn through being lectured at for hours on end. We learn through absorption. We soak up what's around us. I bet you if you start hanging around people who are 10 years ahead of you financially, you'll soon start to pick up their tricks on how to generate wealth here and there and eventually you'll become wealthier yourself. Teachers need to be replaced by mentors because teachers just rock up to the class, read off the same slides they've been reading off for years on end and they're not very enthusiastic about it. Not to mention that none of these teachers have successful businesses themselves, which makes no sense because you don't learn how to drive a car from a person that doesn't know how to drive a car. Moving on to point number three, what they teach you is outdated. One of our assignments was actually to build a website and you're probably sat thinking, what, what do you mean a website? I thought you said they didn't teach you how to build a website. Listen, the website they was teaching us to build was going to take two months to complete. Bruh. We was using ancient programming software as well. And the worst thing about it was that once this website was finished and built, it wouldn't even have a proper e-commerce backend installed on it. Meaning you couldn't come to my website and buy something even if you wanted to. Bruh. And now if you're quick, you can build a website, have it loaded with products and hit your first sale all in under an hour. The whole education system itself is outdated. Here, I'll prove it. Take a look at this picture. This is a car from today. This is a car from 150 years ago. Look at the difference. This is a computer from 75 years ago. It was the size of a house. Here is a computer from today. Huge difference, right? This is a classroom from 150 years ago. Here is a classroom now. How come there's been no change? They bring you in in a batch, shape your brain into a box, and then pass you down the conveyor belt like we're being batch produced in a factory. The education system cannot adapt fast enough to changing technologies and advancements. University is like a rigid tree, meaning it was strong and it had a solid foundation many years ago. But once its external environment changed, it couldn't move with the wind and its rigidity caused it to break because it couldn't flow. And four, all the information they teach you in them classes is readily available on the internet for you. And guess what? It's completely free. Look, I'll prove it. In this particular module called Understanding Organizations, there's a topic in there all about organizational structures. Look at what happens when you type in organizational structures into Google. You get 987,000 different search results in 0.62 seconds. If we know that this is possible and we can learn more from the internet in less time for less money from our bedrooms, meaning university isn't required anymore, that clearly indicates we're not even going to university 
for the actual knowledge anymore. That only leaves me with a few possible conclusions then. That means we're either going there to socialize and make friends or for a piece of paper after three years, which is just heartbreaking. Because if you really wanted to learn and acquire knowledge much more quickly, you'd use your internet. That ultimately means that theoretically, you could then hire somebody eight pound an hour to do your assignments for you and just study for your exams because all that matters is you just getting that piece of paper. So basically, that means you're paying 50K for the university experience and the piece of paper. 50K for an experience and you don't even get to ride on a yacht. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pass on that one. Stop. And five, let's take two candidates and follow their lives on two different routes. One the uni route, one the entrepreneur route and see who ends up on top after 10 years. Let's take candidate one. John is 18 and he decides to go to university to study business for three years. Years one, two and three are spent studying uselessness. He's managed to rack up himself 50K debt and he's managed to gain a piece of paper at the age of 21. But the harsh reality is only one in three graduates actually go on to get a job in their field because all the good jobs require at least three or more years of experience. So now John has to go and get three years of experience from a job that has nothing to do with his degree. But for this scenario, we're gonna say he finds somewhere and he's making 20K a year, but it has nothing to do with his degree, but he's okay with it anyway. It's just for experience. After three years of working there, his potential earnings is 60K. We're not gonna do taxes or add in any other expenses or anything like that, just to keep it simple. Now that John has had three years of experience, we are going to be very generous to him and then say he lands a big boy job making 60K a year two years pass at this new job and he's now potentially made another 120k we'll be generous again and say that John somehow manages to get promoted to 100k a year just after two years of signing up to this new job unrealistic but it's possible but anyway he is now making 100k a year so in his last two years he makes 200k 100k each year. After 10 years, John makes 380,000 pounds. But remember, he's 50k down, so 50k has to be taken away in tuition fees. Obviously not straight away, but that debt isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Not even filing for bankruptcy can disperse a student loan debt, which is kind of fishy if you ask me. Anyway, for this example, I'm just going to take the 50k away from him like straight away just to show you the, the numbers. So John has now made £330,000 after 10 years. Our second candidate called Smith doesn't go to university. Instead, he works from the age of 18 at a call centre to fund his econ business. He makes 18k a year, so after three years of working, he's potentially made 54k. This means the opportunity cost for John the other candidate is £54,000 because he could have followed Smith and done the same thing he did and worked. We'll be hard on Smith and say that even after three years of trying, his business doesn't generate him a single penny. In fact, we'll be even harsher. We'll say that he throws in 10K of his money and he loses every single penny, even though dropshipping has literally zero startup costs. But anyway, somehow he loses 10K. We're just gonna be harsh. We take 10K away from him. After three years, Smith potentially has 44K now. After four years of trying, Smith finally gets the business to start generating 1K in profit a week because he invested 1K into a mentor. Bear in mind that he can take an e-commerce dropshipping business from as little as four weeks to six months to start generating 1K in profit a week. In fact, many people have successfully done the 1K Shopify challenge on YouTube which is a challenge that's going around where people open a brand new store and get it to 1k in profit within its first week of even opening. It's become so simple that teenagers are using it as a game on YouTube to challenge each other. But we're gonna be harsh and say that it takes Smith three whole years of trying because he's not a persistent entrepreneur and he only has three hours a day to work on his business because he's working full time. Anyway, years four, five and six go by and Smith has potentially generated himself another 54K from working. He has also managed to generate 156K from three years of dropshipping. After six whole years, Smith has now managed to generate 253K in total. At the start of year seven, Smith then quits his job to become a full time entrepreneur. He doubles his dropshipping efforts and manages to scale his store to 2k a week. That's 104k a year. He also starts a social media marketing agency that year too, but he only manages to close 
five clients out of 50 after six months of hustling. Each client pays him 1K a month to do their social media marketing for them, which he can charge now because he's got three years of drop shipping experience. So at the end of year seven, he makes 30K from his social media marketing agency and 104K from drop shipping. So that year he's made 134K. In year eight, he makes 164K in total. That's 104K from drop shipping and 60K of a whole year from his social media marketing agency. In year nine, he focuses on YouTube and starts to brand himself on YouTube so he can sell a course on drop shipping. He manages to gain 12K subs this year, but to be harsh, we're going to say that he makes absolutely zero from his course and YouTube revenue, but he still makes his 60K from his social media marketing agency and his 104K from dropshipping. So he still makes 164K that year. At the very beginning of year 10, he then decides to monetize his YouTube channel. So he now can make 1K a month from YouTube. He starts to get smart and puts affiliate links in his video descriptions. Those affiliate links are now making him 500 a month, but I'm still going to be harsh on him and say that his course only gets two sales a month, 1K each. So that's 2K a month from course sales. That's just passive income. So just by jumping on YouTube, he's managed to generate himself another 42K a year on top of his dropshipping business and his SMMA business. For year 10, he has now made 206K in a single year and I'm being super, super harsh on him. Like he has way more potential than that. So after 10 whole years, Smith has potentially made 921,000 pounds minus the 10K he managed to waste and minus the 1K he spent on mentoring. People say that becoming an entrepreneur is risky and that you shouldn't do it and that you'll never make it. But have you actually sat down and research what the odds are of becoming a millionaire. Here are the odds of becoming a millionaire. I think you'll be quite surprised. If you work at a job and you put away $800 a month, you have one in 1.5 million chance of becoming a millionaire. If you think winning the lottery is your big ticket out, don't, because you literally have one in 12 million chance of winning one million on the lottery. And the odds of becoming a millionaire through a small business is one in 1,000. I know which odds I like best. And lastly, university is a money-making scam. Whenever I say I'm going to get a mentor to someone and pay them 1K for their time to teach me all the stuff that they know, everybody immediately goes, no, don't, stop, 1K, are you crazy? It's a scam, don't do it. But Imagine this, if I was a successful businessman and I said to you, hey, come to my school and I'll teach you everything you know so you can become successful like me and make all this money, you'd probably say yes, right? But what if I told you it's gonna cost you 9K a year plus interest, but don't worry, we'll help you pay. Some of you would still pay because 9K is a small investment to learn how to make a million, right? What if I then told you that when you turn up to class to learn, it won't be me in the class teaching you, it will be people that I've hired to come in and teach you. And none of these people that are teaching you have a business themselves, would you still go? What if I told you that after you take my course, you're not even guaranteed to make a million or get a job for that matter? What if I told you that there is no refund for my course? No matter what you do, you will have to pay me. You will never get your money back. Not even filing for bankruptcy will help you. What if I told you that my course has no real photographic evidence of successful people that I've previously taught. There are zero testimonials. Knowing all of that, would you still come to my school? Get a mentor. They give you your money back if you don't like the course. They don't stop until you're satisfied with your results. They have hundreds and hundreds of screenshot testimonials and videos from actual students saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, you've changed my life. Look at my bank account and they show you their bank account. There's no faking that. Testimonials are right there. And most importantly, the mentors have successful businesses themselves. They have the results you want. Why are you learning how to make a million dollar business off of a 40 fucking K year teacher? Anyway, this is me wrapping up today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I try to answer everybody's comments and show love back. If you have enjoyed or gained a little bit of insight from today's content, please smash that like button 
and join the family by hitting that subscribe button. Feel free to hit me up on my social medias. Again, I'll put the link in the description. If you have any inquiries about me designing you a website, hit me up on my social medias. I'll get back to you ASAP. And remember, the blind lead the blind and only the pariahs see the truth. Peace.